Sword of the Volcano A long time ago, there was a small house on the corner of the street, the morning light sparkling in the windows. As Maggie and her grandfather Nolan sat on the porch's rocking chairs, drinking their favorite lemonade, enjoying the majestic mountain view of Mauna Loa. Grandfather Nolan, how tall is that mountain? Maggie asked, pointing to Mauna, Mauna Loa, her head touching curiosity. A very tall mountain. Why do you ask? It just looks like a very big mountain that just sits there. Have I told you the story of the sword on that mountain? What sword? The sword of ash. Grandfather Nolan paused. There was a group of Hawaiians that went up the mountain to slay the dragon of fire. The leader of the Kai clan was the first to embark on the task at hand. Unfortunately, the dragon killed the clan leader. Kai, a clan's warrior, retrieved the leader's sword and placed the sword through the dragon's heart. Maggie was on the edge of her seat, listening intently. The dragon's power was transferred to the sword, and everything in the cave was blown away. What happened to the sword? Maggie gasped. No one knows what happened to the sword. Is it still in the cave? It could be, Grandfather Nolan assumed. You and Will could hike up the mountain and try to find it if you want. I'm going to tell Will all about our adventure. Maggie shrieked and ran inside. Did you both get everything you needed? Maggie's grandfather asked. I'm packed and ready to go, Will expressed, hopping up and down excitedly. Well, let's get on the trail, Grandfather Nolan took the lead with Maggie and Will following closely behind. They walked down the street to the trailhead. The trees were bare with few leaves on the branches. They hiked for hours before they decided to stop for lunch. Are you okay? Grandfather Nolan asked, noticing a scratch on Maggie's leg. I can help you, Will bragged, hopping up. His hand hovered over his sister's ankle. The blood from the scratch flowed down her ankle like a waterfall as Will's power erased the scratch as if it never existed. There you go. Maggie gave a head nod and finished off her last bite of her sandwich. Let's keep moving. She hopped, jumped up, and began walking towards the cave's mouth. Grandfather Nolan and Will quickly got up and followed after her. I can't wait to find the Sword of Ash. I wonder what it looks like, Maggie imagined, thinking out loud. What clean markings will it have? Will stated. Their feet hurt as they hiked high into the mountains. The sun was right above them by the time they made to the cave's mouth. You could hear the whisper of the wind throughout the cave. They lit a torch and entered. How far do we go in? Maggie cheered excitedly. About 20 feet, Grandfather Nolan answered. He held the torch high to light the cave ahead. As Maggie stepped into the dark and cold cavern, as she moved forward, she felt a rock beneath her foot move. At that moment a big boulder rose from the ground in the center of the cave with the sword perched in the middle of the boulder the handle was made of lava rock and still all their eyes were wide in amazement as the sword glowed so bright that it filled the cave with light all three of them inched forward close, closer to the shining sword a lady in an orange and red dress appeared from behind the boulder on the other side of the cave you called upon me who are you will asked confused I'm Ash, the goddess of lava. What are you doing in my cave? We came to find the sword, Maggie cheered. Will stated, We'll take the sword and be on our way, as he stepped forward and being pulled back by Maggie. Don't touch the sword, Maggie whispered in his ear. I read her mind. She isn't happy that we came to take her sword. Maggie held onto her brother's arm. We should leave. She tugged on her brother's arm. Sorry, ma'am. We'll be on our way, Grandfather Nolan apologized. He grabbed Maggie and they exited the cave. Will was still in the cave as he watched the goddess of lava walk behind her boulder and into complete darkness. The boulder slowly sunk to the ground. Will ran across the dirt floor and snatched the handle of the sword and quickly placed a stick in its place. He sprinted out of the cave, hiding the sword in his coat. Where have you been? Grandfather Nolan asked, his eyes meeting Will's. I had to pee, Will lied, hoping his sister couldn't tell he was lying. But she wasn't paying attention. She was too busy picking flowers. Well, I'm sorry, we couldn't get the sword, but we can head home. They headed back down the mountain when they heard a rumble. The noise was so loud that it startled them. What's that, Grandfather Nolan? I've never heard that noise before. He looked up at the sky as the rumble continued. A loud voice was heard. You will pay. You deserve what is coming. The voice boomed throughout the island. The mountain began to shake and rumble. What is happening? Meg questioned. 
I know what, Will confessed, revealing the sword from his coat. I'm sorry, I had to. William, you know better, Grandfather shamed. The goddess of love is angry at you, Maggie declared, her flowers that she picked squeezed in her hand. The mountain rumbled and shook when a blast came from the top of the mountain. Lava poured out of the top and flowed down the mountain, destroying everything in its path. The trees on the mountain burned, that there were no more trees that stood where the lava flowed. What does that say on the sword? Maggie wondered. It says, protector of the land and stop the lava of power. So maybe it will stop the lava before it hits the village. You go ahead. I'll meet you down, Grandfather Nolan commanded. Maggie and Will ran down the trail. It wasn't that long until they made it to the bottom. They stood prepared for the flowing lava, heading straight for them. How do we stop the lava? Give me the sword, Maggie commanded. She read the inscription of the lava rock handle. Stab ground to stop flow. We need to wait until the last second to place the sword in the ground, I think. They stood side by side, watching the flow of lava. At the last second, together they both placed the sword into the ground. A boundary was formed around the mountain. The lava flowed around the mountain, destroying everything until there was nothing left except for rock. The goddess of lava was mad and angry. The sword always calmed her down and helped control her anger. She was so angry that she made volcanoes. The siblings looked at each other and sighed. They were relieved that nothing bad happened. You will need to be punished for taking something from someone. Will and Maggie both turned around to face their grandfather. Okay, I agree. Will stood still, staring at the ground, embarrassed. I think you should clean up and help rebuild the playground. Yes, sir. They walked back down the street to their small home. Maggie and Grandfather Nolan walked inside the house to the smell of Hawaiian haystacks. Will turned and stared at the bare mountain, thinking of his adventure and the lesson he learned. He walked inside the door, closing with the door closing behind him. The volcano sat there from generation to generation, erupting every so often as a reminder.